So this time we really gotta talk about it, okay? Yeah. yeah, this time for real, for real. So I got a, I got this video and I've seen a little bit of it and it was just like absolutely hilarious. Plus this picture is going around as well where you can see Aaron Greenberg. <laughs> And people are and people are saying that this is like the pre woke era of <laughs> gaming and Xbox. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely insane. And I got a bunch of stuff that I want to share with you. Like this video if you think woke is destroying games right now. Dislike the video if you think woke is good. Woke is good. Woke is good. I want to know where you at. All right, roll this one. So it's been a week or two since we have yeah. talked about what is going on with Xbox because. Well, there really hasn't been many big developments happening until very recently. Of course, Sarah Bond did an interview with Bloomberg that yeah. was, I mean, it was just absolutely horrible. You could tell yeah. like she was uncomfortable with some of the questions that were being yeah. asked due to the timing of this interview kind of coinciding with news about Xbox. But I just feel it's so strange that she's the one that's thrown out to the wolves. Like, I mm. get it. She's the president of Xbox or whatever. Yeah, like, I feel like that this was like really her first time being thrown at the wolves. What I mean by this is that usually Phil Spencer would come on and he would take it on the chin. Mad Boote! Uh, he would also, not necessarily him, uh, but he would still talk about it. This time he talked about it, but Phil Spencer just disappeared, bro. Like, uh, we haven't even heard anything from Phil. Ever. But where's Matt Booty? Where's Phil Spencer? You know, Slick Philly, the guy who helped create this situation that <laughs> Xbox is in right now. Like, it seems a little bit cowardly that Phil Spencer hasn't said a oh, single man. thing on the internet about what is happening with Xbox. Maybe he learned his lesson because in the past he has went on record so, uh, and he apologized for Red Fall. He apologized for, like, other stuff as well. And he also did an emergency meeting right after when... You, you remember when we had leaks and rumors about, like, uh, Xbox games uh, coming to PlayStation and that started like another drama in gaming as well right yeah so right after that he went on apology tour and he calmed the homies down he's like it's not gonna be every game guys it's not gonna be every game but some games are coming though you know some games are coming so i, I feel like that he learned his lesson and he's like okay you know what this time i'm not even gonna say a damn thing and maybe th this is why he didn't box when he's usually the one that's out there talking about it and promoting it and saying how great everything is when in actuality we learn that well xbox lied about a lot of things but the new situation that's going on is kind of more in line with the future of xbox and a lot of people seem a little bit confused by this so i just decided to talk about it today okay. because i need something to talk about before the next game at 3 30 because i might have a mental breakdown if they lose but what's happening with xbox uh, right I, I don't know i could be wrong but sickers are saying that they lost or something like that <laughs> I, I, I don't watch it, but like I read some comments, so people are saying they lost. Now, well, Maybe they're the trolling. whole big situation that's happening involves, of course, one of their studio acquisitions, Activision okay. Blizzard. Now, yeah, it's about the same damn Activision. We talking about the same damn Activision, man. Come on, man. All right, let's get into it. Activision Blizzard. If you look at the financials of Xbox right now, they're the one part of Xbox that's that is making actually money. making money because yeah. obviously they have a lot of behemoth franchises tied into them. Even though everyone was, you know, not, you know, Twitter said Activision Blizzard bad, nobody buy their games yeah. and that didn't work yeah. because Twitter's not a real place and people mm. need to understand that. This, this is why I, I, I've been saying like boycotts in gaming don't work unless the game is really, really bad. I, I, the boycotts can work. Listen, I'm not against it. I'm not against the idea of boycotting or not boycotting. I, I feel like that if you like something, go for it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. It's your money at the end of the day. You know for the fact that you worked hard for that damn money, bruh money does not grow on trees so absolutely if you feel like the game is not good for you or or the publisher don't care about you i mean no publisher cares about any of us that's fact number one but but secondly if you feel like that the publisher is one of those publishers where you know you paid them the money you get the game and in return you get to beta test their game and they're spinning on your ass not even spinning on your ass you're they're spinning on your mouth and, and insulting you okay if you feel like that they're really doing it nah don't buy it man don't buy it and yeah go ahead and boycott absolutely but but simply put boycotts and gaming generally generally doesn't mean that all the time but generally speaking don't work they work if everybody come together right there are a lot of factors into it if a game sucks and there is also talk about the boycotts yeah you're gonna see the boycott happen because sometimes it comes and bites them in the ass but obviously activision blizzard has been doing very well diablo's doing well and of course their real behemoth call of duty yeah, and that's what this is kind of contingent on right now because there's been lots of talk 
about the future of Call of Duty on the Xbox. And it appears that now Call of Duty will be coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one. And I'm sitting here looking at this situation like, why are we talking about this? Yeah. Like, why, why is this news? Why was there confusion leading up to Call of Duty coming onto Xbox Game Pass? Because as, as far as I've been told, and as far as everyone has been told, day one, every huh? single first party yeah, Xbox game will be going into Xbox Game Pass. I didn't make that rule. Yeah. You didn't make that rule. Yeah. Unless you're Phil Spencer. You know, none of us in, implored that rule to be put onto Xbox, where every single first party Xbox studio game hmm. gets put into Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, they, they did say that. He's not wrong in that. They did say that, but surely there have been a lot of discussion about it. And even right now, it's considered to be a rumor and a leak that it will come, right? And that's a rumor. A lot of people believe it's going to come. Right now, everybody's believing it's going to come. Let's be real. Because of what Microsoft has said in the past, all the first party games, day one. And, and yeah, uh, Call of Duty right now, Tough Love, it's a first party title. <laughs> it's a first party title. But right now the rumor is that it's coming to Game Pass and you know, this has the same energy So Red Dragon comes out. I, I found that post absolutely hilarious uh, How bad is it when Xbox fans are celebrating because Microsoft intends to keep their promise when you've been lied to so much that you're happy <laughs> when promises are kept. This, this isn't even true just for uh, Xbox. This is true for literally all of gaming, right? It, it's and I, I see this happen all the time. It, it's like games comes out at 30 FPS. People complain. Some people still defend. Oh, hey, 30 FPS is perfectly fine, bro. It is perfectly fine. Yeah, okay, sure. If you prefer 30 FPS, that's that's fine, though. You know, everybody got their preference. But generally speaking, people and objectively speaking. 60 fps is better than 30 fps right? objectively that's not my opinion guys seriously that's not my opinion okay objectively now in my opinion 60 fps is also better Bruh. Right? yeah you feel what i'm saying because i feel like uh, a little bit retweeted whenever i play games uh, at 30 fps like my eye lags and i don't know what's going on in a single player game okay fair but like multiplayer wise 60 fps is just better right opinion wise subjectively and objectively oh it is hella better though right hella better and we're not comparing the fps with with movies here guys like of course movies are shot at 24 fps movies are different Bruh. right like games playing is different movies different games different this is why we play games uh yeah because they're different okay but 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 like it, well, people uh would defend them but like here's what i see happen constantly game comes out 30 fps people complain people complain generally and then like two months later three months later they would come out with a patch and they would have that ultimate 60 fps and within that span of time, they have added tons of microtransactions, shops were at $20, $30 bundles here and there, which people complain about. But now the fact that after two, three months of launch, okay, people have gotten 60 FPS, you know what, that makes it better. That Everybody's like, hey, you know, good. Yeah, you good, you good, bro, you good. Thank you for giving us 60 FPS. Then all of a sudden gamers forget about all the past uh, uh, history and all the past trash that they've pulled through uh through the games yeah er everybody forgets about it then pass on day one that is an xbox policy and that's not necessarily something you can walk back immediately just because you finally got your big cash cow game because call of duty sells once again we could talk about twitter outrage this that or the other mm -hmm. i thought the campaign in modern warfare 3 was one of the worst campaigns oh, yeah. I've ever played. Everyone always hypes up, you know, Call yeah. of Duty campaigns. Oh, you got to play the campaign. You can't just play the multiplayer. You got to mm. play the campaign. So I this time it was the worst. It, it would have been better if they didn't even try to do it uh, like Black Ops 4, right? It was the worst. I, I personally didn't buy, though. I didn't buy Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, I, first Call of Duty ever since I got hooked, my first Call of Duty was Black Ops 1, and I bought every Call of Duty game after Black Ops 1, and I even went back and bought the older Call of Duty games and played them. Yeah, that's how big of a fan I am of Call of Duty, and I just uh, didn't buy Modern Warfare 3. But, but it's not true for everybody. Like, Call of Duty is one of those games, it's like the McDonald's version, everybody hates on it, but everybody keeps playing it, and yeah, you know, that's what it is. Uh, this year, I hope it's good, man. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. But if it's bad, then I'm gonna probably uh, not uh, buy that one too, though. But. Finally play the campaign. It's like three hours long. The story was written by a toddler, and I'm just like, what the hell is this? This stinks. This is terrible. But the game still sells. It's the mm. best selling or one yeah. of the best selling games every single yeah. year. So Mike, if it's not first, it's the second best selling. Microsoft though. obviously saw that and they were like, well, this is good for us. We need a game like this. We need a game to help potentially tip the scales. 
without really thinking about all the stuff that they've said about Xbox Game Pass and how first party games work on it. I feel absolutely no sympathy for Xbox in this situation mm. because like I just said, it's a self-imposed thing. It's like stabbing yourself in the arm and being like, well, why is my arm bleeding? Xbox is the company, if I need to remind you, that they said the games that they were showing were coming out within the next 12 months. The three games they show were Starfield, Forza 8, and Redfall. Two yeah. of those games <laughs> did not come out in that 12 month period. They needed Bum, more time. Bum, bum, the God. one game that did come out, which was Redfall, Redfall, was obviously the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. This game was not ready, but they looked at the situation. Oh man, that is just, yeah, absolutely pathetic. You cannot defend them at, at all. And this is why like a lot of people right now, I, I know the Xbox, <laughs> Yo, this picture is crazy. Oh my god. This is like the, the pre woke era. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, first of all. I yeah, but like, damn, man. Damn, damn. I mean, dude. This was Xbox b before, and now, do I have that picture? I got like a bunch of stuff saved up here that I can pull up for the videos. And now we have this. Now we have this. Imagine. Could you imagine? Now, this is a, this is a woman, guys. Uh, so, strong, independent character. Yeah, bro, like, holy crap. That's Aaron Greenberg, man. I hope the man doesn't get cancelled. This is not why I'm showing this. The man did nothing wrong. He did an interview. Or maybe he did any, something wrong. I'm, I'm not aware, okay? I'm not aware what this picture means. Holy crap, I don't know what happened. But, but like, just by looking at this picture, man, I'm just trying to make a point that, hey, this is pre woke era, and now we got the post woke era. But, like, okay, go off. And they were like... Well, we have Starfield. You know, this is a Bethesda game. They've been working on it for a long time. We can't we can't sacrifice that game, even though to some degree you, you honestly did. Well, Forza, once again, you know, this is one of our big staple games. It always reviews really high. We can't rush that out there. You know, we gotta we gotta let it cook a little bit. Well, what about Redfall? Yeah, Arcane uh -oh. Austin. You know, we'll we'll take care of Arcane Austin. Don't don't worry about it, boys and girls. You know, we just need a game to come out within that 12 month window. And that was the game that they sent out to be slaughtered. Slaughtered by reviewers, yeah. slaughtered by gamers. And then ultimately they shut down the studio, right? And then what did they do? They shut, shut down. down Arcane Austin. <laughs> but with the introduction oh, of Call of Duty coming into Game Pass, now now we're starting to hear about, oh, we gotta do a price increase. We got to do a price increase mm. because this game's expensive and people will want to buy it. And if they're not buying it, we got to raise the price of Game yeah. Pass. What the hell? Now, personally, like, I haven't seen that many people being upset with the price increase. And I made a video recently on it where we were watching, like, an Xbox fanboy, right? Like, I, I love, like, seeing, like, both sides' perspective, right? Uh, sometimes I, I want to see, like, Sony Pony's perspective, right? Like, yeah. we, we put Dreamcast guy on. And listen, I, a, a lot, I, I see comments. Like, a lot of people would say, I hate Dreamcast guy, this and that. Not me, but, like, they would say they hate Dreamcast guy. They hate this guy, that guy. Uh, the way I see it is that I feel like that everybody deserves to get the chance. Everybody deserves to uh, have their opinions, and that's perfectly fine. I and w at the end of the day, we're just talking gaming, guys. It ain't that deep, right? Most of you understand that, but but some some of the delusional fanboys from both sides, listen, from both sides, PlayStation and Xbox, right? They don't understand that. Simple fact here is that these companies don't care about you. The day you pass away, these suckers gonna be sad. Not because you passed away, they're gonna be sad because they lost the ability to like make that sixty dollars, seventy dollars playstation network subscription nowadays it's like what hundred dollars because got different tiers or different tiers and, and likewise for for xbox they would just hate to lose you as a subscriber man yeah they would hate to lose you as a as a yeah we're all numbers we're all numbers to them uh, being a fan is perfectly fine you can have preference like you can prefer xbox over playstation or playstation over xbox perfectly fine but it's like when you treat them like uh, that somebody insulted your mother and uh, and you get that angry over like plastics that's like a little bit too wild so I, I like to cover like both sides and fanboys drama honestly bro it's quite entertaining i'm not gonna lie it's always like fun to actually uh, see both arguments and kind of like turn off your mind and see from both sides but but still it's like right now there is a lot of a uh, i'm not seeing many people being upset about the price increase for xbox i think it's because of this situation right here because we have been lied so much that now we're happy with the promises they're making so it's perfectly fine if you can raise the price and and also a lot of people saw the price increase even though i don't have game pass even i uh, saw the fact that yeah they're gonna increase the price there's no damn way so maybe this is why I i'm not upset about, uh, i'm not upset with it it looks like that he's upset and yeah rightfully so uh, I, I would if i had if i were if i were given the choice oh hell yeah i would absolutely take the no increasing price 
I would take that. Anybody would take that. Everybody would take that, right? But it looks like that they're going to increase the price because they're putting Call of Duty on it, which they promised that they would. But now they are like, uh, yeah, we're going to increase the price. I, I get that point. I get that point. But like, it'll be what it be. I guess the market decides. If people complain about it, I, I bet you they're not going to up the price. You remember when Xbox tried to double the price of uh, the Xbox Online? Do you remember that? That happened, I believe, like two years ago, something like that. Everybody complain about it, bro. Like everybody got out. Even I talked about it. Every YouTuber, Sony Ponies, Xbox Andy's, everybody collectively came as a whole and we solved this problem. And then they reverted, reverted the changes. In recent memory, I guess you know what happened with Hell Divers 2. PC, uh, PlayStation, Sony Ponies, uh, Xbox, Xbox Andy's, the fanboys, the fans, all the gamers, everybody came together, worked collectively as a whole, and guess what? We solved that problem too. Or a little bit, partially. Partially we solved that problem, the game is still banned in some countries right now. Uh, 177, not some, but in a lot of countries right now. What's wrong with you? No one, no one is interested in buying the Xbox right now. No one's really interested in doing it. I mean, as far as an informed consumer is, you know, little shithead Johnny, he doesn't know any better. You know, yeah. he just wants to play games where maybe his friends play, maybe his friends have an Xbox or something like that. He's not an informed customer. An informed- There is not uh, any, there is no, uh, no incentive of buying Xbox right now. If you got a PC, you can get Game Pass there and get all the games. And right now, right now, the only uh, incentive that Xbox is getting is like Call of Duty on Game Pass. But like, if you are a hardcore gamer, you're gonna go on PC and get Game Pass and get your Call of Duty and other games like that right or you're if you just play call of duty or just gonna buy call of duty alone you're not gonna get game pass and save your money that way but if you play other games uh and you play call of duty then you're gonna get game pass perfectly fine but generally speaking the casual fans right now i feel like that if you're somebody that's casual that don't have a good pc uh and you heard about hey you can get call of duty for 20 dollars or 25 dollars a month not sure how much of the price hike it's gonna get but if you hear that and you play other games i guess you're gonna go with xbox so that's like a big incentive for i guess the call of duty players and the casual audience i guess we'll see how that uh, works out for sure customer but. an informed consumer knows that xbox has been lying and they lie <laughs> and they lie and they lie and now they want to raise the price potentially of game pass because of the potential lost revenue with Call of Duty. Who is going to trust this company with something like that? Why is there any trust for Xbox whatsoever? I go back to that Sarah Bond interview where she essentially was the sacrificial lamb. She mm -hmm. was the Redfall in this situation, while the Starfield, Phil Spencer, and uh, Forza, Matt Booty, just Matt hit Booty. in the shadows. They're like, oh, not us. Not, not us. Us. Can't be not us. us. We're not we're us. the cool guys. You know, Sarah, you're newer here. You know, well, you're technically the Xbox president now. We gotta we gotta push you out. I, I think Phil Spencer will take uh, the blame next time when they have a f up. Right? This time they were like, okay, you. Know, <laughs> I, I took the blame multiple times, bro. Sarah, this is your time. Like, it's your time. You need to take the blame right now. You need to take the blame. There. So the plan is to put Call of Duty into Game Pass, and then increase the price of Game Pass or make another tier. Or something like that and it's like is that really gonna help is that really know. going to shift the sands of time is that is that going to to lead you to the promised land where people are buying an xbox to play call of duty so that they uh, if they market it well i can see people give an xbox more of a chance but in the next when the next xbox releases right and, and we're hearing that next xbox is going to be coming out in 2026 playstation 6 in 2027 or 2028 that's what we're hearing so if xbox really uh, it's a rumor by the way just like this uh, call of duty going on game pass it's a rumor and, and if that's really true what we're hearing is that call of duty is going to launch call of duty 2026 is going to launch day one on xbox 2026 if that happens uh, maybe they have a chance they don't have to buy the game like i feel like it, it, it needs to be a sum of all of its parts and the problem is call of duty is still going to be available on pc call of duty is still going to be available on playstation 5. call of duty is allegedly coming to nintendo platforms as well yeah. so what's the incentive you have to have yeah. other things tied into game pass to make it you know to the point of where somebody wants to buy an xbox to play call of duty on it but they also get all of this other stuff but we go back to the whole subscription services thing where subscription services for video games and really all entertainment you know as far as like movies are concerned it's flatlined mm. it's flat mm, yeah you're you're right you're right uh on that you're right but but again though like you're thinking from a hardcore pers fan perspective the casuals and the normies i don't know man 
it's gonna be interesting seeing uh, like how the normies react to it like I'm not a normie though I'm like also a hardcore uh, console guy a hardcore gamer uh, I know uh, about Call of Duty so it's like yeah but like from a normal casual fan perspective I couldn't tell you what going on what's going on in their mind recently this also go went down as well guys Check out this video on the screen. This literally is going on in Call of Duty. We got a crazy amount of stuff happening in the game. DEI and the Volk Squash. Check this video out and I'll see you right there.